these trials of life I find another voice inside my mind he comforts me and bids me live inside the love the father gives in his love I find a haven from my unbelief. Take my life, oh, let me be a living prayer, my God to thee. You and me in the moon make three silver threads tie our souls to the sky. You and me and the moon make three shining through sable lights. Me and you and the sea so blue bobbing along waves that roll on and on me and you and the sea so blue an ocean of shoreless time many small stars streak through the sky leaving their trails of flickering fire. Each shines so bright, ancient and true, just like the fire that burns inside of me and you and I. And the clouds don't fly, asking God why we Shimmer and whirl to 
And all my grave will warmer sleep with me. For you shall kneel and tell me that you've loved me. And I shall sleep in peace until.
Well, well, good afternoon, everyone. I want to make sure that I'm on uh, so that you guys can hear me. And uh, also, I uh, just want to welcome you um, to this afternoon as we celebrate uh, the wonderful life of a, a terrific and excellent young man. Uh, I am so thankful that all of you are here and gathered. Um, what, a, what a tribute, um, what, a, what, a, what a statement to this family to know that, that Dalton was so loved and that they are so supported. Um, I do want to just welcome anyone that is online as well. I know based on geography and based on some of the COVID things that maybe you're not able to be here. So we are live streaming this right now. If you know of a family or friend that's not 
able to be here, but they would have liked to have been. Um, if you want to send them a note, you can let them know. If they go to the Novesta Church Facebook or YouTube, they can find us. Um, and just this is a note for those that are watching live. We may have trouble with some of the audio when they do songs up here this morning. Um, Facebook or YouTube may mute that part. Um, there's not an issue with the live feed, just Facebook and YouTube based on some copyright stuff. Sometimes they will mute that, but the service should continue. Um, I know that doesn't affect us, um, but just so they're aware of that, that's going on. Um, this is a really hard day. And this is a place none of us want to be. And this is a person none of us want to not have in our lives. Uh, to see these pictures and to see these stories and to just have the chance to get to know more about Dalton over these last couple of weeks and talking with the family. Um, there is no secret that Dalton was an incredible blessing to this world, to all of you, to all of us. And as we are gathered here today, we grieve. Um, and I want you to know that I'm so thankful that you are here because I think it is such a testimony. It's such a statement to this family that they are not alone. Um, and, and hearing the stories of seeing the pictures of Dalton, uh, the, the smile on his face, the love that was shared, the joy that was experienced, the memories that were told, and even some of the stories um, that I heard uh, brought a smile to my face. And what an incredible young man. Uh, to think that I would have the answers as to the whys of this world, um, as I told the family, I, I, I have a hard time making sense of these things. We can't always understand the timing, but we know that we are frail, and we know that life is precious, and so we make the most of it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to try to do three simple things. Number one, we are going to connect with one another. We're going to comfort one another. Um, we're going to be here to, to cry on each other's shoulders and to share a story or two, to share a smile and a laugh, probably through the tears. We're going to reminisce with some photos, and we're going to, we're going to do life together I am fully convinced that we as humans are better when we're together. And so we gather here in this moment to be together in this grief, to share in this moment with one another. We're also going to connect with God. I believe that in these times, it's important that we connect to the Father, that we realize that He doesn't leave us alone or abandoned, that He actually comes and is near us, that He comforts us in these times. And maybe most importantly, we are going to celebrate Dalton's life. Um, knowing Dalton a little that I did and hearing about Dalton from those that knew him well, um, he'd be the first one to say, suck it up, buttercup, or he'd be the first one to say, hey, you know what, that's enough pouting. Um, and again, it's okay to pout. It's okay to grieve. We're going to do that. But Dalton would not want this to be simply a dirge that we cry that he's gone, but rather a celebration that he lived in the memories that were made and the moments that were shared. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going we're gonna to seek some comfort. We're going to connect with one another in God, and we're going to celebrate Dalton's life. I want to share a couple passages just as we begin today. Um, and this is truly one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. In Psalm 46, it just speaks these words. It says, God is our refuge and our strength. He's an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And it continues, come and see the works of the Lord. And it ends simply with this, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In other passages in the New Testament, the, the Bible speaks of God as the Father of compassion and as the God of all comfort. We're told in the, in the book of Romans that we should rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. There's a, there's a, there's a, a comfort that comes in, in shared experiences and suffering. Jesus himself says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And we can take comfort knowing that the God of the universe, that the Almighty King is with us right now. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is with them. And I fully believe that God is our refuge and our strength. Psalm 34 says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And there are no doubt broken hearts here. And that means there is no doubt that the God of the universe is with us in our midst right now, offering his comfort and his peace, reminding us of his goodness and offering to be the father of compassion. And so as we hurt and as we grieve, as we, as we stumble to make sense of what's going on, as we stumble to, to grasp the loss of a, 
of a son and a brother, a friend, uh, someone that, that meant so much to so many, we can take comfort knowing that we're not alone, that we are here with one another, but that God is here with all of us. And so we're going to celebrate Dalton well today. We're going we're gonna to have a time of sharing here in a little while, but I first wanted to, to, to start with a song. So I want to offer us a word of prayer. I want to thank God for being here. I want to ask God to, to use this time to comfort our souls, to encourage our hearts, to fill our minds with those beautiful memories and moments. I, I think of the, the fish that were caught, the deer that were shot, the, the power equipment that was driven, the trucks that he owned. I, I, I just I can't get the image out of, out of my head when Nick was sharing about one of the trucks he brought home, and he was so excited about it, and the door was falling off. And, and, and Dalton was just like, well, yeah, I mean, the door doesn't work, but like, look at my truck, you know? And I, I think it's good that God brings those to light, right? That we, we take a moment to, again, we, we shed some tears, but we smile through some of those moments and memories. I, I know the, the time that he maybe was on a four-wheeler trying to get away from a cop. And, you know, like, oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty silly. Also kind of funny, um, you know, and a little bit like, oh, you should have turned left instead of right, apparently, you know, because, um, but those things, those memories, those moments, they capture a lifetime. And while we all, we all wish for more. We also can be thankful for what we've had. And that doesn't mean we, we can't be a little greedy and we can't be sad that there's not more. But, but in this moment, in this time, may we together with God in our presence and with friends and family gathered, take some comfort with one another, celebrate some memories, and share in this loss and this grief. Will you pray with me? Father, um, I'm just so thankful for the moments that you gave to so many in this room with Dalton. God, to be real honest, and I think as, as I just speak for maybe many of us, this stuff doesn't make sense. And it's so hard to comprehend. God, we know that life is fragile, but it's so just devastating when someone close to us is taken. And God, we don't, we don't have the answers for that. We can't understand that, and we certainly don't want it. But God, I'm going to pray that you'd help us to trust you today, to lean on you today, to realize that you are here in our midst, that you walk beside us in our grief, you're close to us in our broken hearts. God, that you want to be our refuge and our strength. When the whole world doesn't make sense, when our, when our lives are turned upside down, when everything is in chaos, God, you want to be that stronghold that we turn to, that refuge that we seek, that, that tower that we run to. I just pray now, God, that you'd be with us. I pray for our minds, that they would be filled with beautiful memories. We pray for our hearts, that they would be comforted by your love. And I just pray for this moment we have to celebrate, and I pray that you would do a work here, that you would be in our midst, and that you would comfort and encourage everyone in this room. God, we thank you for Dalton, and we thank you for the memories that were shared, and we pray that you'd bless this time as we celebrate him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, um, we're going to listen to a song called Go Rest High. And uh, Shannon and Larry are going to bring us. And uh, I'm so thankful for their ministry of music and uh, the way that they're going to uh, speak to our hearts this morning.
Thank you, guys. Yeah, that was fantastic. That was beautiful. I want to share uh, Dalton's obituary, and then we're going to have a time of sharing. And I know there's a, a few that have, have planned to share, and, and others will have the chance as well to, to share a moment or a memory uh, of Dalton's life, the time that was shared, maybe a funny moment that you remember. Uh, Mr. Dalton Andrew Powell, age 20 of DeFord, recently moved to North Dakota, where he passed away in an accident on his way to work on January 7, 2021. He was born October 1, 2000, to Lloyd Armstead II and Jessica Powell in Bad Axe. Dalton was a 2018 graduate of Cassidy High School, where he played football. He loved all things outdoors, hunting, fishing, snowmobile racing, playing and hanging with his dogs, and had a love for playing and writing music. I think he also had a cow or a bull or something, too. Um, he enjoyed working with animals and loved spending time with family and friends. <laughs> and, we still, and we still got the bull around. Dalton will be greatly missed, but his memory will carry on. He is survived by his parents, Jessica and Nick Zartman of Cass City, and Lloyd Armstead II of Argyle. Three sisters, Gloria Armstead, Riley Armstead, and Grace Zartman, and a brother, Drake Zartman, a niece, Carter Sherritt, and grandparents, Gloria Powell of Kingston, Lloyd and Rose Armstead of Argyle, Dave and Yvonne Zartman of Cass City, and his partner, Sophie Allen, and her parents, Dave and Shannon Allen of DeFord. He was predeceased by his grandfather, Noel Powell. And uh, there's some glimpses there into, into Dalton's life, but it just begins to scratch the surface of who he was. And so I know a couple have prepared some sharing uh, that they'd like to do. Uh, I know Dave is going to share in a moment, but I think we'd like to open the sharing with, uh, with one of his really good or best friends, Joe. And so I'm going to invite Joe to come on up and uh, share a little bit about this wonderful young man that we're celebrating today. And uh, Joe, I'll get you to do that. I told myself I was going to get through the speaking part, but I was trying to. Um, it's really beautiful that we were able to tribute Dalton with his music. He, uh, he loved playing his guitar. It's one of his favorite things he learned how to do growing up. Um, Dalton was such a strong man. He's one of the strongest people I ever knew. People that knew him knew he uh, had a lot of curveballs thrown his way growing up. But, uh, he never put his head down or gave up. He uh, always kept working, keep going, kept moving forward, doing what needed to get done. Glad I was able to be there to help him with a lot of his problems and just be able to grow up with him. He had a profound influence in my life. Uh, I remember growing up, going over to Dalton's house in Gage Town, and well, it's always a fun time for us, but sure, Nick and Jesse were always worried about what we were getting into. <laughs> uh, I remember going to the race shop, working on a sled with him. He loved racing his sleds on the ice. And then uh, when we would get back, we'd wait for Jesse and Nick to go to bed and then sneak downstairs and steal their spear. So. <laughs> He thought he'd throw us off by drinking Michelob, but that didn't stop us. We were good. I remember going to school, Dalton always wanted to make people laugh. You never saw him put anybody down, ever. 
He always had a smile on his face when we were out of school, even when he was getting yelled at, which I never understood. <laughs> Maybe he didn't really get it, but it doesn't matter. Um, there's countless stories I can tell about the dumb stuff we did growing up. And just the memories we made. Um, I probably shouldn't tell some of this in front of church, but he already knows. He already knows. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he would probably want me to tell them, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, it was stated earlier he loved animals. Uh, he had a way with animals that I never was able to really wrap my head around. There was always something about him. He would change as soon as he got around an animal. He would start caring for it and petting it and just giving it the affection that it needed. Um, anybody that's been around him will tell you that he loved animals. I remember Bella. He loved that dog to death. Oh. Remember a lot of his vehicles, and I remember being part of the reason some of them were falling apart. A lot of, most of them, I think all of them actually, now I think about it. Um, I remember on New Year's, it was the last time I saw him before he left for North Dakota. He was so happy. It was his dream to move out west and start a little homestead start raising his own animals and start his own family. Oh. It's his dream, and uh, I'm glad he was able to start it. Hope he's able to finish it upstairs. Dalton was always there for me when I was down. He was always there to pick me up. I remember when I was in my accident, he was... I believe the first or second person to come to the hospital. I think he was one of the first people that found out. And I thought it was the drugs that they had me on, but I was like, there's no way Dalton's here already. Like, I just got here. But no, he was there. He got right up out of tech center. He just so happened to drive there and just got up and left, I guess. That's just how he was. It didn't matter where he was. If somebody needed him, he was going to be there as soon as he could. I kind of wish I could have been there for him, but, yeah, I don't know, I guess that's all I can really think of to share right now. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Yeah, I think some of those themes that, you know, you mentioned, Joe, are going to be themes we're going to hear a lot, the, the friendship and the, the concern and compassion. Dave's going to share a little bit now, and uh, we'll turn it over to him. All right, I'm going to try to channel my inner John Wayne and not fall all over. It's been a rough two weeks. Um, when I first found out my daughter was dating a boy, I was not happy like a lot of dads. I mean, she wasn't for it. wasn't time yet. But I had a really good friend, my wife and I, Josh Stern, who was his football coach and his teacher, and he really assured us that Dalton was a good kid, that he worked hard, he was always respectful. And that's what I found over the years. I was just impressed right from the get-go. He'd ask me, can I help you do that? Can I help you carry this? Things like that. And he was always respectful. I never had to say, take your hands off my daughter or anything like that. He was just good. We took him on a trip to Chicago. He was always ask, asking for help. He was never out of line. And he was so amazed to see downtown Chicago. He just stared up in the air at the skyscrapers, and, and we had a good time. And he was also my fearless muscle, so I'll tell a story here. We have a two-story old farmhouse, and it's got storm windows that are kind of screwed up at the top and are on hinges, and I needed to get them down so they could be re-talked and painted and all this stuff. I'm scared of heights. So I tried climbing up my extension ladder, which is a pretty good long ladder. And it was about mm, two feet short of the bottom of the windows. And I climbed right back down and said, yeah, no. 
So I called in my muscle because, I mean, he was, he was fearless. And so we all got out there. I think Shan was holding the ladder, and Sophie was doing something. I was in, the off, in my office where the windows are. He climbs up the ladder, and he stood on the top rung, leaning against the house. But there wasn't much lean. It, I mean, it was straight up and down. And he had a screw gun like this, and he's taking out the screws for me. I'm in the office, I'm hanging on his belt out the window, hoping he doesn't fall. And we got him down, fixed, and later he climbed right back up there and put him back on. So, now to present times. As he sat on my couch the night before he left, he was so happy. His eyes were glowing. He was on a great journey. And I realized the boy had become a man. He was just so excited. He was going out to make a future for himself and my daughter. Now I'll never get to whine to him about my fancy football team anymore. And he'd say, oh wow. He was always saying, oh wow. Or work on a vehicle with him, or watch the Aliens movie, we love that Aliens documentary and stuff, or work, or uh, play Ticket to Ride, or go to a NASCAR race, or just call him when I need help. He became like a son to me, and a future son-in-law. I was, I'm so thankful to his parents that they let us share his life. I'd hoped one day he'd stand over my grave and say this man added to my life, he'd help me. Now I have to stand over his and know that he really changed mine. He's never faced death like this before. Pain has spread thick over my soul. He gave me a big old hug when he went out the door and he said, I love you. But it was worth it just knowing for a few years. And I know that as he passed from this physical plane that God was there to catch him, to roll back the veil of death, show him a far golden country under a quick sunrise. And I know he wanted us to celebrate his life and find joy in our lives again. I love you, doll. He's the big day. Um, obviously those are pretty close and um, a lot of moments and memories. We did want to allow anyone that would like to share a memory to have that opportunity as well. Uh, I'm going I'm to throw my mask on for COVID purposes and uh, you're welcome to come up here but you don't have to. Um, I can bring the mic there. If anybody would like to share a moment or a memory, it, um, you know, we just want to pause for a moment. I know I have a letter from, from Lloyd that I'm going to be reading here in a moment too, but we wanted to pause and give someone else a chance if they'd like to share a, a moment or an occasion. So uh, I'm not trying to stare anyone down, but I don't want to miss anyone. But if anybody would be interested in that, just uh, let me know, okay? If anybody would like to share a moment or an occasion or a, a memory. And some of you are maybe doing that filter like Joe is. Well, is it a shareable memory or is it a silent memory? We wanted to give that chance or opportunity if anybody would like. Anybody else want to at this time? I, like I said, I'm not trying to miss anyone. I just want to make sure I get anybody. Okay. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd wrote a letter that uh, Gloria wrote for me. So, Lloyd, I don't know if your penmanship's bad like mine or not, but he had Gloria write it down so I can read it and make some sense of it. Um, it's beautiful words, and I just want to share them with us now. So this is what Lloyd wrote. He says, as I wrote this, it was snowing. I'm going to say I don't have the words of what my family and I are going through, but I will say Dalton was a great young man with a caring soul. He was always there for his siblings and family. He was such an amazing uncle to Carter also. He was the type of grandchild that would be there no matter what kind of circumstance. He would drop what he was doing and he would be there. 
I remember when Dalton was little and he would tell us he was going to build a ship for all of us to go to the moon and live happy. I think that's so cute. He was and will always be the man that would put someone else's needs before his. Dalton was the type of person that would just sit and listen to anything and everything and be really happy to listen. Dalton was so happy when he got this ranch opportunity in North Dakota. He told his grandma and I that I will always come back to Michigan and bring back what I've learned. Dalton would not want us to mourn his passing, but to be happy for his life. I can still hear him say, don't worry, I'll be fine. You don't have to worry about me. Our Dalton is looking down on everyone and helping to guide us to the life that we are meant to have. To have. I've cried every night for my son, and I can hear him saying, don't cry, I got you guys. I love you, son, your dad, Lloyd. And, uh, I know those words would have been hard to write. And again, you can't imagine that, that hurt that many of you are going through. I, I think of Dalton, and, and again, these pictures that we have, they, they capture those glimpses and those moments. I think of his facial hair on point, you know, and just how, how good it always was. You know, he just had that, he had that country boy look down to a T. And, um, you know, I, I think of the, the many things he was fixing on and working on and driving and doing and playing. And I... I just invite us for a moment to just take those moments, those memories. Maybe it's playing the cards or the games. Maybe it's out on the road. Maybe it's tinkering somewhere in the, in the backyard. Maybe it's shooting something. Um, but can I invite us just for a moment um, to just maybe, maybe close our eyes briefly and just picture one of those moments and put them, in our, put them in our minds with a little smile and a thank you for that moment and that memory we're given. And then I want to offer a prayer as God, uh, again, is with us, that he would just lock that moment and that memory into place. God, I thank you for the gift of memory. I thank you for what it means in our hearts and our souls, the way that you bless us with these incredible minds that can recall with crispness and clarity the, the temperature outside or the the clink of the tool, or the, the smile on Dalton's face. Maybe it's the words that he shared. Maybe it's just the way he sat and listened. God, maybe it is the, the place in the house, couch where he sat, or the, the, the place and position that he had on the football field. Maybe it's a moment at practice or a time in between. Maybe it was a a serious formal moment, or maybe it was just something that was really pretty insignificant, God, but I believe that you can give um, and you allow us to have great minds with beautiful memories, and I just pray right now that you would bless us with those. You help us to just tuck those away with a smile on our face, so thankful for the privilege of memory, and I just pray you'd bring them back vividly. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Obviously, Dalton was thankful for his family, but a couple of years ago, a certain girl certainly caught his eye. And uh, over the last many years, they've been pretty inseparable. And they've had a lot of great memories and moments together. And I know I'm going to speak later, and it's already been spoken of, of the life Dalton was going to build. Uh, but Sophie is going to come, and she's going to share a little bit with us about their life together. Um, and then she's going to sing a beautiful song as a tribute and as an appreciation for the life that they shared. No doubt, over these past many years, you didn't know Dalton if you didn't know Sophie, and you weren't with Sophie if you weren't with Dalton. So, Sophie, I'm going to turn it over to you. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> um, oh, no, this is that. Um, well, obviously, everyone here knows Dalton, uh, and probably knows me. <laughs> I didn't know that I was capable of loving someone as much as I love him. And uh, when he left, we decided that we were going to journal every day that we were apart. Um so we could someday read them when we're old and, you know, <laughs> be like, wow, we were really, really lonely then. Uh, <laughs> but he wrote me a note 
a letter in my journal and I wanted to read it for you guys because I understand that there's a lot of people who probably can't understand why he had to make this journey for himself. And I feel like this really kind of just tells his soul. Um, January 1st, January 3rd, (laughs) 2021. Dear Sophie, I know you are currently reading this, sad, and struggling very hard to read this, possibly because of my penmanship. (laughs) It's awful, it's so awful. (laughs) But by the time you read this, I will be gone. I will be on my way to bigger, wider pastures, and you will be on your way to a better you. I know you will become a beautiful woman while I'm gone, and I know you will be the best thing for our dogs. And I know you will be the best you can be for the time being. I will grow new bonds, meet new people, see new things, and you will be stuck home alone. But I know you will grow during this time, and I know I will grow with my time. I know that with time, love seems to be stretched apart, but our love is not like an old deer hide. Our love is more rubber than leather. We are able to love one another through space and time. Whether we break up or stay together, our love in our hearts will always remain. I could run away to North Dakota and feel safe at home, still being more than 1,000 miles, somehow because I know I have things waiting for me when I get back. Things of love that seem so close, but are going to be so far away. Things of love that, like my forefathers had, for the sure abundance of land there was, so that they could forage for their family and raise their kin on. But one day I know that with your love, I am on the right direction to become the man that the great wonders above made me for. Love, Dalton Andrew Powell, date of birth, 10-1-2000. Mother, Jessica Ann Powell Zartman. Father, Nicholas David Zartman and Lloyd George Armstead II. He didn't realize how true those words would ring when I read them, when I found out that he had died. And, uh, yeah, you know, he spent all of his time at home just playing music and playing with our dogs and writing music, and I I found hundreds and hundreds of just pages everywhere. He would write songs on anything he could. And uh, I found this book in my bookshelf full of songs he had wrote, but then I had found his goals in life. (laughs) And uh, this was probably a year ago now, but he really did accomplish a good few of these. (laughs) Um... Mary Soap, <laughs> join the military, become si- some kind of animal person with a good job, <laughs> play badass guitar, get a bike, travel the country, own lots of land with lots of animals, have kids, and then underline three times it says give them a good life, and most importantly, have fun. And, uh, yeah, you know, he really did accomplish so much in the few short years we had him. And even in the few short years that I knew him, he changed and became a a completely different man than when I met him. And I am so forever grateful for the time that we shared together in the love that we built. And, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just so thankful for him. And I know he's going to take care of me and the dogs. I know we'll be okay. (laughs) So I'm going to sing a song called Songbird by Fleetwood Mac, one of his favorite bands. Um, I used to hold, I remember holding his head in my lap. And he'd ask me to sing to him, and this is the song I would sing. So uh, 
They only thought it fitting to sing it to him one more time. So... sun will be shining and I feel that when I'm with you it's alright I know it's right to to you I'll never be cold and I feel that when I'm with you it's alright I know it's right and the songbirds are singing like they know the score and I love you I love you I love you like never before to you I'll give the world to of all I wish it from myself and the songbirds are singing like they know the score and I love you I love you I love you like never before like never before like never before what a what an incredible just what an incredible moment of love and, uh, and honesty. And um, Sophie, I thank you for sharing that, that journal. I know that that's a, a private thing, and yet it's so, so powerful that you were willing to share that. And, uh, and yet I think Dalton also included a little humor in that he wrote this beautiful love poem and this love journal, and then he said, and we're not like deer rawhide or whatever he put in there. And 
I thought that just was, was pretty appropriate, that in the middle of, you know, this, this sappy love, love journal, not knowing how powerful it would be, he included the difference between leather and deer, and I thought that was just so Dalton from what I know of him. So where do we go? What do we do? How do you, how do you go through tomorrow? In all love and in honesty, guys, I don't know. I wish I could just say it's you're going to wake up and it'll be okay, and that's not the case. This hurt's going to linger. The grief's going to carry on. There's going to be a lot of hard moments ahead, and I'm not going to pretend that there won't be. But I do think what we can do is we can think about Dalton's life, and we can celebrate all those incredible qualities, and we can live them out in our days and moments. And in that way, we can carry forward his legacy as he was so intent on starting and creating and sharing. And I just know over my time, over these last couple weeks of talking with you guys and hearing the stories and seeing the pictures, um, not to boil it down to be simple, but to make it something that we can grasp onto, can, can I invite us to consider three parts of Dalton's life that I think would be important for us? And the first one is this. I think Dalton was a good friend. And so I'd say to all of us, let's be a good friend. Uh, in the conversations that I heard from all of you, what an incredible friend he was. I think Nick shared on his Facebook that it was his best friend. And I know Dave mentioned the friendship. And I know Joe had the friendship. And I, I know that when I first saw of it, and I saw the picture of, of Dalton doing the flooring with Drake. And then they told stories <clears throat> that Dalton and Sophie would come over to the house and Dalton would never say hi to Jesse and, and Nick because he was going out to play with the kiddos. And he was going out to be a player. And Sophie's like, I don't know what those kids are doing. But they would, they would jump and they would play. But then I heard, and it was just quietly that it was shared, but it was shared so many times what an incredible listener Dalton was. I don't know about you, but a lot of country boys, they ain't all that into listening all that time. You know, like they want to shoot something, drive something, or blow something up. Um, but Dalton, multiple times by multiple people, it was mentioned what an incredible listener he was. You know, we live in a world where everybody wants to talk. Everybody wants to talk. I want to tell you what I'm thinking. I want to tell you what I'm doing. I want to tell you what I want to tell you. I want to tell you. And yet Dalton shut up, sat beside, and became just this incredible friend and listener to so many. He had great wisdom that he shared, but he shared it in a in a way of, of opportunity, not in a way of pointing fingers. And boy, I just think if we're, if we're going to go forward from here, I think being a good friend is a really, really, really good place to start because it's really, really, really what Dalton did well. I think secondly, I think going from here, I think we need to fear not. I think we need to fear not. I, I think of the story that Dave told about the, the young man on the ladder reaching up with one leg with the screw gun in his hand. I think about the adventures that probably many of you had with Dalton, and fear was not really a part of his vocabulary. Now, sometimes that meant that silly boy probably got himself into some silly situations. Probably sometimes that meant he ended up with a bruise or two he could have avoided. But I think in general, fear is a debilitating disease. And I think we live in a world that is full of fear. It is full of, of, of caution or withdrawal or pause. And I think just maybe today, maybe today we need to commit a little more to fearing not. That doesn't mean reckless. I'm not, I'm not advocating for reckless, silly behavior. But I think probably there's a, a, enough of us in this room where fear has been our default. Fear of rejection, fear, fear of failure, fear, fear of this, fear of that. And maybe just maybe today we pick up a little piece of Dalton's life and we, we fear a little less. And we give a little more. We realize that fear is not from the Father above, but rather from, from Satan who wants to lock us in a cage of anxiety and worry and concern. And instead, we choose to fear not. That doesn't mean go climb a window and doesn't mean, you know, leap off a building. But fear is something you know and you feel, and I think we should feel it less. So fear not. Dalton did. I think he was blessed and we were blessed because of it. So be a good friend. Fear not. And finally, maybe most importantly, Find victory through adversity. Find a way to overcome. You know, in our conversation with the family, um, you know, Nick's like, I work on cars for a living, but Dalton would never ask my opinion, you know, or he'd try to fix something at the house and he'd break it three or four times. I think Sophie mentioned the one time 
after about a couple of days of him trying to put the car together, she's like, Dalton, we got to call somebody. We cannot pay for you to break this more. Um, okay. Dalton wanted to wrestle through it. He wanted to grow from it. He wanted to figure it out so he could be better because of it. And there's no secret here amongst those that are gathered that Dalton's past few years were full of adversity. Some by his own silliness, some by just a really bad set of circumstances. But to a person in this room, we need to know that when Dalton passed away, he was in his best place yet. He was so confident about the future. He was so at peace with his family and friends. He was so excited about where he was getting to go and what he was going to do and what an overcomer Dalton was. To be real honest, the things that happened over the last couple of years would have broke most people. They'd have given up, thrown in the towel, made excuses about life, and just really kind of cashed it in. But Dalton used that not to feel bad for himself, but as fuel to make himself better. And I just want to encourage you all today, you want to, you want to do something to honor Dalton's life, you find victory through adversity. Don't make excuses, make them opportunities. Make them opportunities to be better and to do better and to overcome, to look back and say, you know, I wasn't always dealt the best hand, but I sure made the most with what I was given. Dalton's life is a, is a story, is a testimony that one bad thing or one bad this or one bad hand doesn't have to ruin your life. You can pick it up, put it together, and move forward and carry on. I think it's what Dalton would want us to do. He'd want us to take that. This is a hard moment. It's been dealt a hard hand, a difficult blow. No one should have to bury their son. <clears throat> But Dalton would want you to find victory through adversity, to love more, to share more, to do what we can in the moments we're given to make the most of this precious, precious life that we have. So can I encourage you as we go forward, cry lots, smile often, be a little ticked that he's gone, but also don't give up on this life that we still have. Be a good friend. Fear not and find victory through adversity. I want to pray for you. Father, um, I just come before you right now asking that you would be with those gathered. God, you know the hurt in this room. You know the heaviness of the hearts, the, the exhaustion that they're facing, the worry and the concern, the fear about how to go forward. Just the sadness that is so very real. God, you are the father of compassion. You authored it, and I'm praying that you would pour it out. You are the refuge and the strength we can turn to, and I'm praying that you reveal yourself as an incredibly strong tower. God, we thank you so much for Dalton's life. Though it was short, it was so full. Though we want it to be longer, we'll th we're thankful for the moments given. God, would you be with us in our lives now with the breath that we have, with the days that we're given, with the moments that are before us. Help us to be a good friend. Help us to fear not and help us to find victory through our adversity that we face. We thank you that Dalton lived that and we pray that we would live it as well. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You know, being a preacher, I can't, not work in a little Jesus. So give me 75 seconds. Jesus is a really, really, really good friend. Jesus promises that we can fear not because he's already overcome the world. And Jesus, through the cross, has guaranteed victory for those in Christ. Man, you need a good friend. Let me introduce you to mine. If you're fearful, the Bible says 365 times to fear not. And if you're going through a mess, or you're wondering how it's going to work, or if there really is hope for you yet, boy, let me tell you about the cross. With Jesus, through Jesus, and because of Jesus, there is hope and there is joy to come.
And I'm praying you all feel that. And I'd love to have a conversation if you don't. All right, I'll take my preacher hat off. That's it. I don't know if that was 75 or not. But I won't get too long. Listen, we're going to cry still. We're going to grieve much. And no doubt, we can all lean on each other. I encourage you all, over the next few days and weeks and months, send notes to these folks up front. Send notes and stories. When you're out this summer and you are missing Dalton, send Jesse a text and say, I want you to know I'm missing Dalton. Send her a text and say that. I, you know, let them know that you remember them. Let them know that you're praying for them. Be with one another and encourage one another in, the, in these days ahead. But we're going to close with a song that I think is pretty Dalton, from what I gathered. The song's called Save the Roses, and I know there's some beautiful flowers up here, and I know the family appreciates them greatly. But the song makes a pretty, pretty valid point that I think we should do our best to live out. Dalton doesn't want us to just sit in a room and cry. He wants us to go our, and live our lives in remembering him well. And so as this song plays, we're going to close the service. And I would just simply say, as this song plays, may we commit today to being a good friend, to fearing not, and to finding some victory. I'm thankful that you are here today. I hope you enjoy this song, and I hope that we'll remember Dalton's life and live ours to the very best that we can. Thank you for being here. Dresses and suits, but y'all know me, and you know the truth. That ain't me in that box there in front of you. Can't I just get an amen? And y'all just get out of here. I got the best view ever now that I'm way up here. Joking around with Jesus, catching up with Grandpa. Hurry up, preacher. I'm telling y'all, you should be fishing with a cold beer in your hands instead of missing me here. You should be missing me there, high up in your dear stand. To save my truck and save my guns, and when they're old enough, give them to my sons. Don't let this stained glass shine on y'all too long today. Save the roses, save the roses. Don't waste a moment. I'll tell who. Just say it now, you gotta show her every chance you get to get to know her better. Remember forever, don't last forever. Take it from me and my brand new point of view. The biggest regret of your life won't be what you did, it'll be what you didn't do. You should be fishing. Instead of missing me here, y'all should be missing me there. How open your dear stand. Save my truck, save my guns, and when they're old enough, give them to my sons. Don't let this stained glass shine on y'all too long today. Save the roses, save the roses, save. Once again, I, uh, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, we're not going to do a, a formal dismissal. 
Um, but the family is going to stick around for a little while. And so, um, you know, I know we're pretty crowded and full. Um, there's some hand sanitizer in the back. But if, you're, if, if you've gotten a chance to visit the family, you're welcome to stick around for a few moments and visit again. If not, you know, you can make your ways where there's not a den or anything today. Um, but I know the family is so grateful for your being here today. And uh, so I want to thank the musicians that were with us today. Incredible job to all of you. And uh, I just, I, I'm thankful for this group that's gathered. I know that this family is surrounded by love, and I'm praying that you'll keep loving each other well. So um, that's it. You're, you're officially dismissed. Um, feel free to linger around and share, share stories and smiles. Um, but thank you for being here today.